Uh, what's up guys? I hope you've been well. So as you can see, we have a crystal structure here. This is hafnium. And the lattice parameters are as listed in this website. So you can always go here and check for any element that you want or any compound and you will get the crystal and lattice structure, the crystal structure or the lattice parameters as you can see here. Is it is HCP or hexag hexagonal close packed. So even the weak of position or fractional coordinates of the atoms and get them there. So today we want to work on transition state search using Material Studio. So and in this tutorial, we'll see the transition barrier, the activation energy, how to obtain it from Material Studio or CASTEP calculations. So according to this paper by Henry Wu, 2016, so you can see hafnium has two stable sites, octa octahedral site and tetrahedral site. So if you look at this structure, we cannot put any oxygen atom inside here because it's only two atoms. So the first thing that we have to do is to create a supercell structure. But before that, usually I like to do this. I copy, I paste twice because I need two, two documents. So this one, I'm going to call it octa to signify the octahedral site and this one tetra for tetrahedral site. So now in this case, at this point, we want to create a supercell. So to create the supercell, just come here build symmetry then after symmetry make supercell so and then you do one like that create supercell so you'll find if you want to know the total number of atoms you don't need to come and count just come here click that down arrow symmetry system we see you have 16 hafnium atoms so as you can see this is it so now we want to put the oxygen at the octahedral site so you have two options. You can put it at 0, 0, 0, which is this coordinate here. But in our case, or in this tutorial, I want to show you how to put it inside here. So how to put it inside here. So the first thing that I want us to do is to change a few things here. So the size of the atoms. So we increase just a bit so that the oxygen atom is a bit smaller. So in cell and so on and so forth. So now I want to put the oxygen atom between these two because this is the octahedral site. So if you want to, to know, to get this where it is, you have to come, click this one of the atoms and take these fractional coordinates. With these fractional coordinates, you add, you, you write them down and then you take the next one like that, write them down add and find the in between divide by two you get the in between so in my case i had done this earlier so i want to add the oxygen atom as shown so these are the atoms that i previously had added sorry sorry this is not it this is a different We do 0 0.033, we do 0 0.5, 0 0.5, so for the octahedral side, and then we add. As you can see, we have the coordinate number 6, that means the T coordinate number, if it's 6, it means that the atom, the interstitial atom is bonded to other 6 atoms. So to display it, so you just come display style. And then we put CPK and then we put 0 0.3 and now it looks good. Now the other one is for the tetra. So we do the same thing. So when creating these supercells you, for transition state search, you must, the lattice parameters must be the same. You cannot use a BCC and a HCP. They have to, both of them have to be BCC 
or FCC or HCP, the crystal structure or lattice parameters must be the same. So now for the tetrahedral part, so do the same thing because our oxygen atom is somewhere here. So we can choose any tetrahedral site. So tetrahedral site is somewhere in between this, that, that. I want to highlight. So tetrahedral site is inside, somewhere inside here. So to know that site, just take this, the vertical atoms and that atom, that atom, and then you do your calculations, you get the site. So I want to add mine, the oxygen atom. So the one that you had seen earlier, it was for, for the tetrahedral site. I've added mine there. So, and then come display style, CPK, like that. Remember, these two supercells, they are not optimized. So, we, we must optimize them. They must be optimized before the transition state is complete. So, now for the next, the next step is to create the trajectory files. So, for us to create the trajectory files, come here tools find equivalent atoms this is very important so come there find equivalent atoms now select two documents as you can see you have two documents so you cannot select hafnium because that is it's only it only has two atoms so we select the octa and the tetra because they have the same as you can see one matched atom 16 unmatched atoms so just auto find and now it is now zero matched and then all the others are 17 17 each so now you close now after closing i come here same same reaction preview so now at this point come here the reactant so the reactant is the tetrahedral we want to see how this oxygen atom will migrate to the octahedral site so come here select tetra and at this point select octa like that number of frames so you can default is 10 but if you want to see a very smooth play so you can always increase this number as much as you can so now we say base you can decide what you want base preview on reactant or on product it's up to you so and then you click preview like that so we close that then you come here we, we click this button we have play here so to enable this just come here to view and then toolbars and then animation you must enable this so you can enable all the other things that you that you see here if in in your material studio you cannot access this or you cannot see them just go to view toolbars and so on so now we play as you can see you can see what is happening so that is the reaction preview so you can easily stop it now we can now now we can calculate our transition state so, so now the next step is to do the transition state search so first come here calculation now go to geometry optimization make sure that you have cell optimization like this and then now here we come and select ts search like that and then you come here job control put the number of calls that you want and then here we must check there's nothing you must inspect if there's anything that is checked now leave everything at medium and now we come here to more and optimize reactants and products and then leave this at lst qst so now we click run and we wait they take quite a bit of time So now our calculation has completed and uh, we have this document here. So we'll have the reactant, transition state, and now the product. So it's just the same thing product, but three states. So as you can see here, we have the tetra, 
these were the transition states. So we are overcoming the energy barrier here, the activation energy. So now we are overcoming it. Now we are going back. It's like a curve that goes like this, raises, and then goes down or vice versa. So maybe the reactant is at a lower energy level than the product or vice versa. So to check this, to investigate that, we have to do transition state confirmation search. So we will first. The first thing that we need to do before doing that, we have to go to the report that has been generated. The, this one. So we go all the way down. And then we have so many warnings. One, two, three. We have this is what transition state found. This is very important. If it was not found, the calculation will have terminated prematurely. So we have barrier from product. So as you can see, the product has a very high barrier. So it's more stable at the octahedral site. Barrier from reactant, very small. So that means it's easy for the oxygen atom to move from the tetrahedral to the octahedral, but not easy to move from octahedral to tetrahedral. So now we need to do the transition state confirmation. So for us to do that, click here, and here, calculation, select TS confirmation. If you click run like that, like I have done, you see TS confirmation given scope is not a trajectory. So you say, okay. Now the trajectory is this one, that one. So. Now, if we do that, we can click on, and now it can start. It will take a bit of a longer time than the previous one. So the transition state confirmation is still ongoing, the calculations. So you will be seeing a graph, graphs like this, energy versus QST path one, transition state. This transition state is the one that we obtain from the transition state calculation. So this is just confirmation. And then we have the minimum energy path, path three. So we have here path one, path two, path three, and so on and so forth. So this is how it should look like. Yeah. So our transition state confirmation search has completed successfully. And now this is the data that you want. Final minimum energy path. So this is what we want. And now you want to use this data. As you can see, we have reactant, image, 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 transition state, image, image, image. So we have 10 images, and for each, each image has been optimized. So this is the reaction coordinate or the path, and then this is the energy for each point. So as you can see, we are rising up, climbing up, going positive, and then we're going negative up to the energy state of the product. So what you want to do is to take this data and go to your graph drawing software. You can use Origin or Excel, so Microsoft Excel. So come and plot. So you want minimum energy path versus energy. So once you plot, you'll get a graph like this. So this is where the reactant is. And now we have the activation energy. So this is the activation energy this reactant must overcome so that it goes to the product so as you can see the product energy is negative is below the reactant and that means that the product is more thermodynamically stable than the reactant yeah so that marks the end of this video i hope you enjoyed